Hey, look, I didn't hear any music when you guys did the tea, so tell me there is something going on right now. Oh, there absolutely is. In fact, they're just the MC is checking the mic and they're getting ready to kick things off on this stage behind us here at Hart Plaza. This is a celebration, not only of the city of Detroit, but of education and of jazz in a way that honestly, you just can't help but get excited. 300,000 people expected right here in downtown Detroit for the 43rd annual Detroit Jazz Festival. And they let us out of the building to do this. So wonderful. No, it's a beautiful it's be evening here in downtown Detroit, and we're just happy back in person. And with that, we're going to bring in Chris Collins. He's the Detroit Jazz Fest Foundation president, and you work so hard on this every year. Obviously, it was wonderful that you were able to stream it live and gain such a larger audience, but to be back in person, how does it feel? Yeah, it's so special for all of us with everything we're doing right now. We're all relearning, right, They're getting our sea legs back and it's uh, it's caused us all to open our minds up be a little more receptive maybe a little more flexible and I think the festival down here is going to be a celebration of that because the music is as people would expect with Chucho Valdez and Diane Rees and Joe Lovano and all those people but also some of the new voices Nubia Garcia and Julian Lodge and our own Anissa Leo which you guys covered so it's 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 one of those coming together moments around an art form that means the world to Detroit the 30 million dollars in economic impact is music to the ears of course of everyone who lives and works in the city of Detroit. But this foundation does extraordinary work to help with education for young people in Detroit. That's such an important lesson here of this of this festival. Thank you, Rupi. You know, that's so important. It is a year-round foundation, and much of it culminates here, our youth vocal competition, our collegiate combo competition. All the winners are here. We have award ceremonies and sort of that wrap-up of the kind of all the rehearsals with Chucho, with our Detroit Cats. It's going to be a coming together of all that. But the financial piece is significant. We have great sponsors, again, presented by Rocket Mortgage. Who could ask for more? Right. But in addition to our incredible donors like Miss Gretchen Belade, it's the individual donations that make a difference. So we're excited. We've launched a, a text to give campaign, text DJFF to 24, I'm sorry, 243-725. And it'll take you right to the portal. Give a dollar, give five dollars. Become part of the family. Now, it, you said it, though, obviously the financial support is huge because we want to be able to support the next generation. And we had, uh, you know, the young woman you just mentioned, Anissa, Anissa Lea, she came, um, Amy Lang did a story on her, so talented. Oh, yeah. She is an example of that. That's right. You know, it, it shows how uh, ubiquitous jazz is in our community in all generations. And it's something that we want to preserve because the Detroit Jazz Festival is owned by artists as a real jazz festival. And the fact that it's free and we're breaking down these barriers areas of participation. That's what costs money. That's not free. Nobody pays for it. The artists work for very competitive prices. At the end of the day, we want this to be the same for your grandchildren and mine. That's so yep. exciting. Chris Collins, so good to see you. Congratulations you. and welcome back to an in-person event. We are all so excited for you, for us, yes. and for our entire community. And I got to tell you something. Right now, the hotels in Detroit are filled with people from all over the world. We're here to celebrate the very thing that you're celebrating right now as you watch this live report about a really institutional uh, event in our great city. And the best part about it, it is free yeah. right now. So you do have to come down and enjoy it in a beautiful evening. We see the people starting to filter in. The music has the jazz, the smooth sounds starting to play, and uh, we love it, and we hope you do too. And we're going to come back a little bit later in the show and uh, bring you more from the 43rd Annual Detroit Jazz Festival. But for now, reporting live from Hart Plaza, Tara Nasher. Rup Raj, we'll send things back over to you, my friends. Uh, so great to see so many people of all ages performing and then also appreciating this really unique experience. Rup and Taryn, looks like a beautiful evening, perfect to get out and enjoy. It really is. You're right about that, Amy. You know, I'm going to tell you something. So across the world, people think about certain premier events in, in the world, right? Yeah, sure. And in Detroit is on the map for jazz. New Orleans does great jazz, but this is the largest free jazz festival in the world. And we're so excited because J.P. Morgan Chase is one of the sponsors of this great event. And Jason Tinsley is one of the guys who's so proud to be part of that company doing what they do each and every day. Yeah, because it's not just about the jazz fest. You're very involved in the community. And how excited are you to be part of this and so many other important things in Detroit. Well, Rube, Taryn, thank you for having me here today. No, I'm super excited to be here as we are every year for almost the last 20 years. Uh, Jazz Festival is near and dear to our heart. Our headquarters is down here in downtown Detroit. Uh, one of our stages, the J.P. Morgan stage, is right in the campus marshes. And of course, we're glad to be here at the Carhartt stage with all of our other fellow sponsors. Uh, the commitment to Detroit, 90 years next year. This is our 89th year. Next year, we'll celebrate 90 years in Detroit. 
uh, for, for banking. Going, our heritage goes back lockstep with General Motors sure. uh, and, and, and National Bank of Detroit. That's our heritage. But for you personally, born and raised in Detroit, yeah. to be able yeah. to see this festival, been, yes. it's been going on for, since what, 1980? I mean, it's so important to people here in the community. What does it mean to you? So what it means to me, and as a child growing up in Detroit, there were so many festivals that were here in Hart Pleasant. Every weekend you could come down here with your parents or catch the bus down and ride your bike. And to know that this is the last free festival that we actually have in the state of Michigan, and it's the world's largest, as you said, Ruth, the largest free jazz festival on the globe that people come to from around the world. To have this in the epicenter of culture, as far as I'm concerned, in Detroit, it means everything. Well, you mentioned the word culture, and I think that you know people are coming from other parts of the world who are staying here and coming here and watching what Detroit does. This place, this place is special in the world, and this festival puts it back on the map for those who aren't familiar. Isn't that an important moment for us? For sure. I mean, we're on the international border, right? You mentioned the world. Uh, to be on the international border, but in this great city, in this great country, it means a lot. As people start fanning in over the weekend, the crowds are going to be enormous. We have great weather, and uh, to be able to listen to great music all weekend and just take in the city, because you just won't do jazz festival. Yeah. Hopefully, if you're coming from around the world, you'll come in here, you'll you'll hit other parts of the city, the museums are open, uh, and you'll just take in the entire community. And that's what we expect, and that's what we love. All right, so what about you? What are you looking forward to hearing the most? Who? Uh, so I know Diane Reeves is this weekend, yeah. so I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to hearing her. I mean, I think all the acts are phenomenal. Uh, tonight is going to be amazing. Right. So I'm looking forward uh, to Chucho Valdez. It's going to be a wonderful uh, ensemble tonight. Thank well, you so all much. All you gentlemen Jason, out yes. there who are watching, uh, the color to wear apparently is this exact color of blue. I guess just I missed the memo. That, no, no, that's no, just no, for no, the guys. No, no. You, you have a great accent. You yeah. have a great, you're the great accent. Right. Okay, we're, okay, we're just okay. gonna <laughs> hang out. Great to see no. you, Jason. Thank, Thank you for all you do. do. Really appreciate yeah. it. Right. Thank you. You know, and it's so cool because in the years that we have not been in person, they yeah. were able to gain even more, I guess, fans, spectators, viewers, and some that are coming to town now. Now that we're back in person, two years because of the pandemic. You know, you mentioned the online viewers. 2.5 million people took to the internet during the pandemic yeah. last year and watched the jazz festival unfold. Music heals the heart. And my God, did we need this during this terrible pandemic. And this is what they're going to continue to do on the stage behind us. And hopefully the weather will continue to hold out. It's an absolutely beautiful day. Evening here in downtown Detroit at the Heart Plaza, looking at the Detroit River, a slight breeze in the air and people starting to fill the stands. So, hey, you can come on down too. And you're hearing that, well, that MC, whoever this man is, give this man an award. <laughs> he has the perfect voice to introduce Jazz Fest. And you know what's happening all weekend. Come on out and have a great time. Back over to you. Hey, you know, I got to tell you guys, uh, tell ETN, uh, you probably can't hear me, I love the suit, yeah. but also, since I am new, tell me what to expect here at the Jazz Festival, because I'm new, I'm sure you got a lot of people who've moved to Detroit in the last three years, yeah. they want to know what's up. Well, new tonight, Brandon, actually, is being here at Hart Plaza in front of the Carhartt Amphitheater stage. This is where it's kicking off. And like you said, it's the first time since 2019 to be back in person. So that's somewhat new, too, that we can actually see each other and sit by each other. You can see the crowd right there taking the stands. A beautiful evening. The first performer getting ready to set 6 o'clock. So we're all excited. We are so pumped up. And this is, you know, for Brandon and others, of course, you need to be reminded because of the pandemic, 43 years of tradition here talking about the world's largest free jazz festival. Musicians from across the globe are joining us here tonight, including Etienne Charles. Etienne, who you mentioned. Who you mentioned, and Etienne, uh, our reporter anchored, uh, Brandon Hudson said, oh my God, I gotta tell Etienne, his suit is rocking it. And Brandon wears a lot of bright color. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Brandon. It's good to be here. It's good to be back in Detroit. I love the city for many years. I taught in this city for four years at a community music school, Michigan State University Community Music School on Woodward Avenue. So I've been playing this festival since 2009. So it's kind of a homecoming. Good to see everybody out and about back in person. With the Michigan State game tonight, you're wearing the Uber green tonight, huh? Go green, go white. <laughs> I know. Well, you perform all over the world. What is special when you come here to Detroit, performing here and with all the fellow artists, jazz artists? Well, one, it's about the history of jazz in Detroit, right. you know, which goes all the way back. One of the oldest jazz clubs in the world, if not the oldest jazz club in the world, is right here in Detroit, Baker's Keyboard Lounge. Yeah. And just to see the energy of the audiences, especially because it's a free jazz festival. And then the energy, I hate to say, the energy of the hotel lobby is something else because it's all these musicians from all over the world that we all tour. The only time we really get to see each other is when we get to this lobby in Detroit at the end of the summer every year. And it's just always a big homecoming. It, it, it's, it's a grief, you see all the different generations. I remember my first time I played it was with Gerald Wilson. 
wasn't passed on. He was from Detroit, and then again with um, Andy Andrews and so many legends. So you see, kind of this this generational connection happen here in Detroit. It's special. For me. So what do you tell someone who's watching right now who's not? into jazz has never really sampled a heck of a lot of it and they're just considering coming out here this is a great way to really learn i would say come i would say bring your kids come to have a good time come on an open mind come to see and feel the energy of something that's been having having its time here in yes. the city for so many decades now and you etn will be taking the stage tonight with the artist in residence chuchos valdez at 7 p.m correct 7 p.m showtime here at the all right carhartt amphitheater please come check us out all welcome right. to detroit etn great to see you welcome back you welcome, welcome back welcome yes back. indeed i know much. so much history with jazz here in detroit and it's so great to be part of it here um, on this beautiful night and we're having a great time hopefully you'll come out here and have a great time as well at the detroit jazz festival reporting live rupert Taryn Asher, and we'll send it back to you in the studio.